Sutta said, The ashes of auspicious nature are of two types. I shall explain their characteristics. Please listen attentively. One is known as Mahabhasma, and the second is known as Svalpa, little. The Mahabhasma is of three types, Shrauta, Vedic, Smarta, from Smriti rites, and Laukika, from ordinary fire. Svalpa is ordinary ash, which is of various forms. The Shrauta and Smarta ashes are to be used only by the twice-born. The Laukika and Svalpa can be used by everyone. Sages have said that the twice-born should apply the holy ashes while repeating mantras. Others can simply apply them without any mantra. When dry cow dung is reduced to ashes, it is called Agneya, fiery. O oh, great sage, this ash can be used for Tripundra. The ashes resulting from Agnihotra and other sacrificial rites shall be used for Tripundra by men seeking intelligence. When the ashes are put on the forehead or smeared with water, the seven mantras, Agni, etc., mentioned in the Jabalupanishad shall be recited. People of all varnas and ashrams shall put Tripundra on the forehead or dust their bodies with bhasma using the mantras mentioned in the Jabalupanishad. Or if no mantra is used, they shall do the same with reverence. Dusting with the holy ashes and smearing Tripundra in horizontal parallel lines shall not be abandoned by those who seek salvation. Shruti lays down that they shall not get negligent. Shiva, Vishnu, Uma, Lakshmi, goddess of speech, and other gods and goddesses, Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, persons of mixed caste, and hill tribes have observed Tripundra and dusting always. Those who do not observe Tripundra and Udhulana, sprinkling Bhasma, cannot practice well the various rites of the different Varnas and Ashrams. Those who do not observe with faith Tripundra and Udhudalana cannot be liberated from the world even if they take ten million births. Even after hundreds of crores of kalpas, Shiva knowledge will not dawn upon those who do not observe Tripundra and Udhudalana with faith. This is the final conclusion of all sacred texts, that those who do not observe Tripundra and Udhulana with faith are tarnished by great sins. Any action performed by those who do not observe Tripundra and Udhulana with faith will give adverse results. O sage, the hatred towards Tripundra and Udhulana is kindled in the hearts only of those great sinners who hate everyone. After performing the sacred rites of Shiva in the fire, the devotee who has realized the self shall smear the forehead with the ashes, repeating the mantra beginning with Triyayusha. The moment the ashes come in contact with his body, he will be freed from sins of his impious acts. He who observes Tripundra with white ashes during the three sandhyas every day becomes free from all sins and rejoices with Shiva. He who makes the Tripundra on the forehead with white ashes shall attain on death the primordial worlds. No one shall repeat the five-syllable mantra without applying ashes on the body. After making the Tripundra with the ashes, he shall perform the japa. All holy centers and all sacrifices will be present forever in the place where a man, having put ashes on his body, stays permanently. 
no matter whether he is ruthless, base, sinful, or commits mourning sins, or is a fool or a fallen man. Even a sinful person is worthy of being honored by devas and asuras if he has tripundra on his forehead. What, then, of a faithful man endowed with a pure soul? All the holy centers and sacred rivers go ever to the place which a person who is endowed with shiva jnana and has put on ashes casually visits. Why should I say more? The sensible persons shall always apply the ash, shall always worship the phallic image, and shall always repeat the five-syllabled mantra of Shiva. Neither Brahma, nor Vishnu, nor Rudra, nor sages, nor the devas can explain adequately the greatness of the application of the ashes. Even if a person has eschewed the duties of the varnas and ashrams, he shall be freed from sin if he wears tripundra once. Those men who exclude a man wearing tripundra and perform holy rites are not liberated from worldly bondage even after crores of births. If a brahmana wears tripundra on his forehead, he must be considered as having learnt everything from the preceptor and as having performed every sacred rite. Those who begin to strike on seeing a person who has applied the ash are reborn of Chandala parents. O Holy One, this can be guessed by the wise. With great devotion, Brahmanas and Kshatriyas shall apply the holy ashes over such parts of the body as are prescribed by the rule, repeating the mantra, Ma Nastoke, etc. A Vaishya shall apply the ashes repeating the Triambaka mantra, and a Shudra with the five-syllabled mantra. Widows and other women shall do like the Shudras. A householder shall repeat the Pancha Brahma mantra, and a Brahmachari shall repeat the Triambaka mantra at the time. The Vanaprastha shall repeat the Agora mantra, and an ascetic shall observe with the Pranava alone. A Shiva yogin, being outside the pale of Varnashrama rites because of his conception, I am Shiva, shall wear ashes with the Ishana mantra. Shiva has ordained that the rite of wearing ashes shall not be eschewed by the people of any caste or outside the bounds of caste by other living beings. A person who has applied ashes on his body actually wears as many lingas as there are particles of the ash that remain on his body. Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, Shudras, people of mixed caste, women, widows, girls, heretics, a brahmacharin, a householder, a forest dweller, an ascetic, a performer of sacred rites, and women who have tripundra marks are undoubtedly liberated souls. Just as the fire, when touched with or without knowledge, burns the body, so does the ash, worn consciously or unconsciously, sanctify the man. No man shall drink or eat even a bit without applying bhasma or wearing rudraksha. If he eats or drinks, whether he is a householder or vanaprastha or ascetic, a man of four castes or of mixed caste, he becomes a sinner and goes to hell. If a man of the four castes repeats Gayatri, or if an ascetic repeats the Pranava, he shall be liberated. Those who censure Tripundra actually censure Shiva. Those who wear it with devotion actually wear Shiva. Fie upon the forehead that is devoid of ash. Fie upon the village that has no Shiva temple. Fie upon that life that does not worship Shiva. Fie upon the lore that does not refer to Shiva. Great indeed is the sin accruing even from the sight of those who censure Shiva, who is the support of the three worlds, and those who censure the man wearing Tripundra on his forehead. They are on a par with pigs of the rubbish heap, demons, donkeys, dogs, jackals, and worms. Such sinful persons are hellish fiends even from their very birth. They may not see the sun during the day and the moon during the night. They may not see them even during sleep. They may be freed by repeating the Vedic Rudra Sukta. 
Those who censure a person wearing the Tripundra are fools. A mere talk with them may cause a fall into hell. There is no way of saving them. O sage, a tantrika is not authorized in Shiva Jnana, nor a person having Urdva Pundra, tilak worn on the forehead as a vertical mark by a Vaishnava. A person marked with a heated wheel, a mark of a Vaishnava, is excluded from Shiva Yajna. There are many worlds to be attained, as explained in the Brihaja Bala Upanishad. Taking that into consideration, a man shall be devoted to the ashes. Just as sandalwood paste alone can be applied over sandalwood paste, so only the ash shall be applied over the sacred mark on the forehead. A sensible person will not apply anything over the forehead that wears the ornamental mark of ashes on it. The tripundra shall be applied up to the forelocks by women. Brahmanas and widows shall apply the ash also. Similarly, it shall be applied by persons of all ashrams. Thus it bestows salvation and destroys all sins.